Hey there, so we're going to start with the TLDR version for those of you who are just looking to get the tips and tricks and get out. Let's go ahead and get started and then I'll explain in more depth after the fact, after that. So we're going to start with our uh, cylindrical shape here that's got some, it's got been extruded along a curve here. There's currently no UVs to it. What I'm going to go ahead and do is go into the UV window, um, go modify, unitize, and you can see that that creates every single face in it from the 0 to 1 space. Let's go ahead and minimize that again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select where we're going to want our seam to be on our mesh. I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom part here just so it's going to be the least seen part of the mesh here. Then we will zoom out, shift, left click, and drag to invert that selection. Go back into the UV window, shift, right click, go to move and sew edges, hit layout, uh, unfold along the v-axis. Make sure you select everything so it unfolds everything along the v-axis. There we go. And then layout again. And let's check our checks on that. There you go. You can see that the uh, there's no distortion along the path. It does go smaller with it, but uh, you can further mess with that as you'd like. It gives you a good foundation of a clean, uh, straight, planar unwrap. All right, let's go into more detail. So this trick will work really well with anything that is uh, even slightly cylindrical. So that goes from like this braided rope here um, this torus shape that in reality is actually just a plane that's been rolled up into a cylinder and then uh, wrapped around 360 degrees to meet itself. Um, anything that, uh, yeah, can be uh, it, but a cylindrical will benefit from being used for this trip. This trick, it may need some cleanup after the fact, but it gives you a very quick and easy foundation um, to continue cleaning up for your UV space to make it pack better to make it um, have as minimal distortion as possible. So um, let's go ahead and start. Let's, let's just do the same thing, just a little bit slower for those of you who need um, a little bit more explanation, which is totally OK. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way. Um, and maybe I'll go ahead and throw in how I did the uh, curves as well, just, just for those of you who may not have seen that before as well. So I'm going to go up to the Create uh, menu here, go to Curve Tools, and I prefer the CV curve tool because it's really easy to modify your curves after the fact if you'd like. I'm going to hold down the X key which allows me to snap to the grid. Uh, the reason I do this is if I did not, you would see that if I click there, that actually worked pretty nicely, but in the past with versions of Maya, <laughs> um, it would put that well below the grid and it would just be out of place, so it would be, it was easier. So actually, okay, looks like they fixed that recently to the point where now with the CV curve tool you can kind of just do this really simple uh, clicking around and just, just create your curve pretty simply. I'm going to go ahead and move that as close to approximately to the center origin point as I can. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create our cylinder cylindrical face. Now let's go ahead and create a disk here. Zoom in. I'm going to go into my inputs here. Change the subdivision mode to circle. There we go. Otherwise, you get some weird stuff. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go. We created a disc, which sorry, I have my whole hot bar up here that I've customized over my time using Maya. Uh, to create a disc, you can either create a cylinder that's an eight eight sided uh, cylinder, and you can just delete everything but the end caps to get the same shape, or you can go to create polygon primitives um, disc here. It's a new thing to twenty eighteen Maya. Um, and you can you can then do what I did here where I did eight sides using the circle subdivision mode and one subdivision. Okay, so we've got our eight sided cylinder here. I'm going to um, line it up with our curve here and you can actually, um, you notice that my, uh, my rotation is uh, snapping 15 degrees along its axis and that is a special thing you can do here. Um, with step snapping and you can either have it set to absolute like I have so that it always does it at 15 degrees or you can use if you hold down J while you're uh, uh, rotating or doing anything it will do the opposite so because I have it set to absolute when I hold down J uh, I actually am able to rotate freely along that axis um, I think I do more uh, I prefer to by default be able to do 15 degree snaps just because I do it more frequently than I would um, not <laughs> so and it's just a simple simple click with J there 
Um, okay, so now we've got our face and it's lined up along the start of our curve here. I'm going to make sure I click on the mesh, right click and go into face mode. Select all of those faces. Uh, you have to do this when you're extruding, otherwise it won't work. And then I'm going to shift left click on my curve here, hit control E to extrude. And you'll see that uh, simul or instantaneously the uh, <laughs> it jumps and makes a line along the thing. Uh, and it looks a little bit broken. The reason it's doing that is because we only have our division set to one right now, and so it's using one division to get from the beginning to the end of our curve. If we bump that up to something like 250 divisions, you can see now that it actually uh, follows the curve quite nicely. Um, okay, so now we've got our cylinder that's been extruded along the curve, um, but you can see that obviously there's no UVs to it right now. If we were to go into our UV editor, it's got the basic um, cylinder uh, um, stuff, which is just the end cap and the starting cap. It doesn't have all of the stuff in the middle. It's all been stretched along something. Let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete the end caps just because I found that this doesn't work super well when those are hanging around. And there's a couple of ways we can easily go about instead of just manually selecting each thing like this, clicking on it, you can either hold tab and paint your selection. This is the, the um, what is this called? It's the same as if you were to go into your selection tool settings here. In your selection tool settings and go to camera, or to, sorry, drag selecting. Um, you can see now it's, it's set by default to that, but you can actually uh, toggle by um, holding down tab and then just dragging your selection. You can do that. The other thing you can do maybe is, um, well, this is actually, this isn't as, this would work if, if all of these had, um, those added. You'd see now it selects everything. If all of these were connected, for example, if they looked like <laughs> that, then you could easily select everything. And this is another tip you can do to maybe make selection easier for yourself, just thinking in different ways you can approach the same problem. Um, so be able to select this. I have a quick key here to um, cut the UVs along the selected edges. And so now that this piece here has been selected from this, and if I go right click UV, UV shell, I can actually select by shells, which means that it'd be easy to, to delete that. Okay. Long drawn out process of <laughs> deleting two cylinders from our, or two uh, discs from our long cylinder here. But now what we're gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna close this so I can get some space back. Let's go ahead and clear our history and center pivot and freeze transformations. You don't have to do that, but um, I do it pretty easily periodically just because I have the buttons up there. Um, I'll go ahead and make another video for those of you who are curious about making shelf uh, hotkeys and stuff like that. I found that it's a very simple thing you can take about five, ten minutes to do uh, just to put the buttons you use the most frequently uh, right at your fingertips and that really speeds up the workflow for you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select our uh, curve here. Let's go to UV. UV editor. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Um, go to modify, unitize, then we're going to go ahead and select where we're going to want our seam to be. In this case, again, we're going to do it on the very bottom. The reason we do this is because hypothetically, if this were an asset that was going to be seen in game, for example, um, it's not as important these days, um, but you should try to hide your seam as much as possible. Um, and if this is something that's going to be seen from this kind of angle here, you'll never actually see the bottom and you shouldn't ever see where the seam is. Um, so it's easy, it's best to hide it somewhere like that where it won't ever be a complication. So now that we've selected that, again, we're going to zoom out. I'm going to hold down shift, left click, and I'm going to left click and drag to invert my selection you can see that this guy is not selected anymore now if we go into our UV window here again 
shift, right click, move and sew edges, uh, what it's now done is you can remember, so what Unitize does is it takes every single one of our faces and it puts it from the zero to the one uh, in our uh, UV layout editor here. And so now what we've done with doing move and sew is you can see every single one of our faces that was zero to one is the perfect square has been stitched together um, into this guy. <laughs> okay. So now that we've done the unitization, we've stitched everything together, and we have this big long boy. Let's go ahead and maximize that just so we can see the most of our space. Um, the final step we're going to have is just to select the UV shell. I'm going to go ahead and lay it out so that it puts it within the U to 0 to 1 UV grid 1 space here. Um, and what that will actually do is we'll get to start to see um, if you have a checker board thing on it, you can a uh, checkerboard pattern material on it, you can start to see where things are stretched and pulled, and you can see that we're not quite there yet. But that is why then we'll go back into here. Again, we're going to select now. I'll just select my UVs by right clicking and going to UV, left clicking and drag, uh, dragging everything. I'm going to go over here to where it says unfold along, and I have V selected. So that I do that, it's just going to pull it vertically and not horizontally. So you can see that went from just one grid to like stretching it back out to like 10 grids. And what we're going to do now is just go lay out one more time so that it recondenses it back to that UV 0 to 1 space. And now if we take a look at our guy, you can see that we have a non-distorted, perfectly unwrapped uh, cylinder here. Uh, some stuff you can do just to, to maybe make it make use of your space a little bit better um, would be to leave the geometry right here. Let's just assume something like around here is our midpoint for the cylinder. I'm going to select that. I'm going to cut it there. And then if I go back in here now, um, the reason that this is as small as it is is because we've reached the maximum amount of 0 to 1 as we can. But if you were to cut it in half, then imagine that that goes there. If you repack it, it's now shorter and therefore can take up um, more horizontal space, which means that it's got a higher resolution and it's utilizing more pixels in our texture. So that is that. That's the long and short of it. Um, I actually uh, saw this uh, tip utilized by Paul Paulino on ArtStation there. I'll make sure to link his channel down below, or his ArtStation uh, page down below. And I would love also, I'll link my own if you'd like to follow me there, if you um, have one. And yeah, that is all for this. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to be able to answer those for you. Um, and I hope this was helpful for you. Alrighty. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.